Hey everybody, this is Brad from the Stock and Options Room at the ShadowTrader.net live trading suite. And today's trade idea is Monster Beverage. As you can see, not too long ago, this stock was over $61 a share. And there was a pretty large earning gap, earnings gap down on Thursday and bottomed out at around $43.30. Um, I really like stocks that gap down after earnings, especially if they've been in a downtrend prior to earnings and then there's a large gap. And the normal MO for me, it's called G plus three, right? And what that means for those who've never heard it, it's gap down and then wait three days. And then by that time, the people who have been long the stock can't take the pain anymore and generally have to sell. And when they sell, that's usually the worst possible time. And uh, traders like myself and others will come in and buy stocks that gap down. Now, this is a little bit different because, as you can see here, well, Brad, obviously it gapped down on Thursday, but Friday went up. Aha. Well, that's a good sign because there are exceptions to the rule. All right. One of the exceptions to the rule is if the stock gaps down to prior support. Well, guess what? it broke down that support. So that's pretty bearish, right? The other exception to the rule is if it were to gap down into a gap. Now, again, you can see here, there was a gap uh, back in the end of October, beginning of November. And as you can see the gap, not that that was an earnings play, but that's kind of what I mean. If there was a prior gap somewhere to the left, that's also an exception. And then the third exception is a Fibonacci retracement. So again, the exceptions to the rule are prior support, I'll put PS, gapping down into a gap, or a Fibonacci retracement. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, Brad, I mean, that's this is a one-year daily chart. I mean, that's a new 52-week low, so obviously it didn't gap down to a Fibonacci for support either, right? So I know some of you are thinking, well, there's no prior support because we went below it. There's no gap. And there's obviously no Fibonacci retracement either, anywhere to be seen. Aha, but wait a minute. What I did was I went back to a two-year and then even a three-year daily chart. Actually, I had to put it on a weekly. And as you can see, there was some prior support here. But that was, you know, obviously trying to pick that low off after earnings. Unless you were watching and waiting, right, you're not going to get that price. Okay, but there was some prior support. But... The other thing that made it important to me and a viable trade is a fib retracement. So from the March 2022 low to the highs here in 2024, we are back above a very important 61.8% retracement. So that right there tells me that from this high to this low, traders feel and investors feel that this stock is now worth a buy because it has, begot, it has become cheap enough. And really, the stock has dropped over 15% from the high here in March to the low on Thursday. But, you know, like I said, we didn't catch the low. I didn't catch the low. As a matter of fact, I'm not even in the stock yet. But I'm going to be in the stock, and that's why I'm doing this video on Monster Beverage, uh, because I think this is worth a trade. Now, the reason why this is interesting to me, and again, it's not at a prior support, it's not at a gap, but it's at a longer term Fibonacci retracement. And that Fibonacci is around 45.56. And also the high on August 8th, which is Thursday, is 45.54. Right? So right now, I know that this 45, let's just call it 45.55 to split the difference, right? Because again, the fib retracement is 56. The high on Thursday is 54. Now I know 55, I'm sorry, 45.55 is a very important level. So what is this going to mean to me come Monday? Thank you, Jimmy Buffett. Well, you can see the stock is, you know, closed above 45.55. And you can see here it closes around 46 bucks and that's fine. Right. If the stock opens anywhere from, you know, Friday's high, which is around 46.32 to the 45.55 area, right? Anywhere in this area, 
I will be a buyer. Okay? Now, what happens if it gaps up above Friday's high on Monday? I'm doing this video, you know, Sunday afternoon. Uh, but if it gaps above the high, what am I going to do? Well, I'll wait. I'll wait a five-minute bar. And then if it takes out the five-minute high, then I'll buy that high, whatever it is. All right? If it gaps up, then all of a sudden fails very quickly, then I won't buy it. The other thing is if it gaps below 45.55 on Monday, then it's going to be no trade. Okay, so again, ideally, I want to buy the stock between 46.32 and 45.55. And if it gaps, like I said, above Friday's high, I'll buy it if and only if it takes out a five-minute high and holds the gap. In other words, if strength comes in, that's fine. I don't mind paying up, but it has to stay there. So if it stays above 46.32, then I'll buy a five-minute high. And then, you know, you can see here pretty clearly, well, I shouldn't say pretty clearly, but my first target is going to be the gap fill going all the way back to October 13th. You know, and that's somewhere right around 47 and a quarter. But the real target for me is going to be the gap fill up here, right, to the uh, gap down after earnings. And that day, of course, uh, was here on Wednesday. And that low is around $50.45. Okay. So I think the setup to me looks good. It makes a lot of sense. Um, again, I'm not in the stock yet, but now I have definitive zones where I want to be a buyer, right? Like I said, anything above the 4555 area and between that and 4632, I'll be a buyer. If it gaps above, I will buy only with confirmed strength. And obviously, I'll be looking at the overall market. What's the Dow? What's the S&P? What are the NASDAQ doing? Uh, and then, of course, if the strength persists, uh, then I'll buy it over a five-minute high. And if it gets to 47, I might even buy more. And then the target, like I said, is the gap fill somewhere up here. And the other thing that I really like about this, this setup as far as targets is, you know, and I, I love the Fibonacci retracements, but from that high... To the low, I mean, look at where the retracement is right here. And that's only a 38.2% retracement, by the way. And you can see this gap fill to 47, right? There's going to be some prior, you know, overhead resistance possibly here. Um, but I think the stock makes sense and the trade setup makes sense. And the other thing is, you know, the low on Thursday is way down here at around 43.32. I don't need to put my stop there. I just need to put my stop basically below 45.55 uh, or thereabouts. You know, I wouldn't put it too close. Uh, and if the stock works, add more. If the stock continues to work, add more. And then obviously, you know, you want to trail your stop up as the stock does move in your favor. All right. So anyway, I hope it helps. Monster Beverage doesn't look too scary to me. Have a great one, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Peace. Hey everybody, this is Brad Agonis with ShadowTrader.net. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short video. If you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button below. Also, you can check us out, ShadowTrader.net slash squawk. And if you want to trade live with myself or any of the other ShadowTrader moderators, sign up, give us a try. Take care, good luck trading, and see you soon.